Greetings, fellow action figure connoisseurs, and welcome to another episode of Digital Caveman Presents G.I. Joe Tuesday. I, as always, am your host, the Digital Caveman, and today I will be presenting you with the G.I. Joe Classified Series Retro Carded Scarlet. Let's get into it! Let's begin with a look at the packaging. And here at the top, we have warning, no stick things in your pie hole that do not belong there. Four and up. And the hook piece, G.I. Joe. I really wish it would say Real American Hero on there, but Scarlet. And then we have some nice artwork that differs from the original, but is very reminiscent of that original. And then the, speaking of original, there's that old Hasbro logo nice big blister showcasing the figure and her many many accessories then on the back we have gi joe scarlet and then an actual file card and it does have a little bit of information on there not a whole bunch like the original cards had but they also have what little they have it's also in other languages as well and again that artwork from the front cover and if you want to pause it and read all that stuff, I'm not going to read it for you or to you. So there's that. And then fictional name. And then here's the cross sale Retro Recondo. This figure Scarlet and Retro Duke. Parents, G.I. Joe.com. This stuff has been recycled or is recyclable. Attention, especially don't stick things in your French pie hole. Warning, attention, Octung. Don't stick things in any other language pie hole that do not belong there. Don't give it to baby. Small print, fine print, legalese print, main China print. Symbols, I'm not going to learn. And a barcode. That, my friends, is a look at the packaging. But I will say this. They did improve the packaging. It's much thicker now. More like those retro Marvel cards rather than those Walmart G.I. Joe classified retro cards but there it is my friends a look at the packaging let's take a look at the figure and her accessories and first up let's take a look at the stand and it's nothing we haven't seen in this retro line before the G.I. Joe star two pegs a place where the name should be tampoed on but it's not and that's pretty much it these really do just remind me of larger versions of i think they were the 25th anniversary three and three quarter stands and they've just taken that design and upscaled it to one twelfth scale i could be wrong they could just be basing it off of that design a little bit and i'm just remembering wrong but here we have handy dandy tweezers so we can take a look at some of the smaller accessories and she comes with a set an extra set of hands which are fists on in and out hinges nice molded details i'm sure we've probably seen these hands before although i'm not 100 percent sure they look like they're armored on the back so maybe it's just armored or reinforced there on the knuckles. And again on in and out hinges. Then she does come with four arrows. And they are all slightly different. This one has quite a broad head for the arrow. This one has a more slender head. The 
this one is kind of in between the two. At least that's the way it looks to me. But it also has some extra details there as well. And then the last one is some kind of claw or gripper. And I'm sure they've used this before in the show and I just don't remember. It's been a while since I've sat down and really watched a real American hero cartoon. And then here is her classic weapon, her crossbow. And the arrows do fit in it, even though you'll notice that it doesn't have anything like replicating a string. I know there's a special name for it on a crossbow and I can't think of it. So the arrows do fit in there and they fit in there quite snugly. You don't have to, unless you jar it really hard, you don't have to worry about it falling out. And it has lots of nice molded details. This is molded in black plastic, just like the arrows. And the hands were molded in their appropriate color plastic as well. So very nice looking crossbow. Then here we have the cartoon version of G.I. Joe's standard issue firearm that shoots lasers. Lasers. And it looks to be molded mostly in this tan color and then maybe this brown it is a paint app. At least I'm assuming those are the colors they are. Those are the colors they look like to me. I'm colorblind. Don't make fun of handicapped people. And then we have the other weapon that looks like a more modern standard issue military rifle. And again, the same holds true with the colors, the paint app on the stock, and the rest of it seems to be molded in this color. Also, the magazine is removable. I do believe we've seen this somewhere in the line before. Maybe with Grunt. Might have been before him. And we have a sidearm. She doesn't have a holster for it. But we do have a sidearm for her. And the same holds true with the molding and the paint amp. It has that one single paint amp. It looks like across the top and the rest of it is molded in the appropriate color. She also comes with a knife. And again, those same colors. But it may be reverse this time. This may be the plastic and this may be the paint out. And then here we have her backpack, which is a small version of it. And it kind of reminds me of that small version that some of the Joes came with back in the day. And of course, there's some storage pegs on the side for it and the peg that goes into the back port. And it has nice molded details and it looks like a modern piece of military equipment. And the last two accessories, she has two different ponytail pieces. This one, when you stick it in, it kind of sticks straight out and it looks like it's mostly molded in this red and then this band here is the paint amp and so that one's kind of more straight and then this one is kind of curvy and it works really well with with her wearing the backpack this one does and it does have nice they both have both nice molded detail in them a little bit of a wash would have been nice for these pieces but it's retro so I feel like it's going more for the animated look but you could also say it's going more for the classic real American hero figure look as well and in fact if you don't put the ponytail pieces on her of course you're left with a port hole right there in the back of her hair but the original figure didn't have long hair that didn't come until the comics and the cartoon and so she had a short 
haircut similar to this originally. Now, as far as the paint apps go, the hair is probably a separate piece glued on to the head. It's got a little paint app here for the earring, nice face printing for the face, the eyes, the eyebrows, the lips, maybe on the cheeks a little bit as well. Then it looks like this is a paint app, maybe this is a paint app. Yeah, I think this is the paint app, then this is a paint app on the shoulder. And then most of the arms look like they're molding the appropriate color. We've got these two paint apps right here of the Ninja Stars. On the inside, she has a, a little like automatic Derringer type pistol ready to pop out into her hand should she need it. Nothing like that on this side. Um, got this little grenade right here. A zipper here, a zipper here that are possibly some type of pouches. Yeah, it looks like this is a pouch right here unzip it here and then you can stick stuff in that little pouch and then zip it back up or maybe not because it's got this same seam work on the opposite side but no zipper then one piece that's not really classic but I'm glad they added it and I think it's a really nice addition is this quiver and it's molded in mostly this color here and then we've got a paint app right here and then a paint app here for the buckle and this paint app comes around here it looks like they could have done a little bit better job with it it doesn't come all the way to the edge like maybe it should and then the belt on the figure herself is a paint app it appears and then most of the legs down here look like they're molded in the appropriate color plastic as well as the boots and the feet so not a super large amount of paint apps going on for this figure and probably this piece is you know the part of the bodysuit that's on the crotch piece there is more than likely a paint app as well or it could be the opposite and this on the outer part of the legs or the outer part of the thighs hips however you want to call that is a paint app I'm I don't know I'm not a paint expert by any means but it it looks like it could go either way really but I think the outside is probably the paint app but again I could be mistaken I am not a paint expert now let's take a look at her articulation she can look up that high and the head is on the, the the articulation scheme they use mostly on classified series the head neck and upper torso are all three separate pieces here and you know, there's a ball at the bottom of the neck and then a dumbbell at the top and then she can look down that far she's got chicken neck she's got waggle she can do the full exorcist and it's a little loose not so loose that the head just bobs on it, its own but it, it is very easy to manipulate butterflies at the shoulder go back that far go forward that far so it could stand a, a little bit more movement there 360 degree rotation at the shoulder and she can raise her arm up slightly better than 90 degrees cut here at the upper bicep for a full 360 degree rotation double hinged pinless knee uh, knee <laughs> elbow don't y'all love it when I get my anatomy confused? So it gives you that much bend. 360 degree rotation at the wrist on up and down hinge. And on the other side is up and down hinge as well. And I mentioned earlier, the fists are both on in and out hinges. Cut here where the upper torso meets the abdomen. Gives you all kinds of hula. 360 degree rotation. Then there's a ball joint here at the waist as well that gives you more hula and another 360 degree rotation. And working in conjunction, she can lean left and right that far. She can lean back that far and crunch forward that far. At the hips, of course, she has the pull down. Uh-oh. I didn't want to pull that down. 
she has the standard for G.I. Joe pull down hinge and she can give you right at the full splits it looks like she can kick forward that far we'll call that 90 degrees backwards with a little bit of out well without the outswing about a full step cut here at the upper thigh for a full 360 degrees of rotation double hinged pinless knee and get it right that time i didn't call the knee an elbow so it gives you that much bend there is a cut here at the upper shin at the top of the boot 360 degrees of rotation there and at the ankle tilts down that far tilts up that far which is a lot feels like anyway and then forward facing pin for rocker now as far as the accessory storage goes she can only wear one of the ponytails and since I'm gonna put the backpack on her I do prefer this one and speaking of the backpack there's the port there's the post and they just go right in there and you can see like I said you know that that really kind of lays more on top of that like I feel like it should and then as far as the standard issue weapons go right here on these outside posts the trigger guard just goes around them and I guess it goes more this way no that don't feel right either so we'll put it that way so there's that one and here is this one and they they port on there pretty darn snugly now as far as the knife goes it goes in the leg sheath right here so there's that and nothing for the pistol unfortunately she just has to hold that in her hand and as far as the crossbow goes she has to hold that as well and if I could hold on to these accessories I might could get them where they need to go so she holds that now before I put the crossbow in her hand the arrows do fit in the quiver but they don't go the way you might think they do they actually go in backwards back in first because you know that definitely won't fit in there so a little dangerous to carry them around that way I would think but I'm not that much of a crossbow person so I could be mistaken but it just seems like the other way would be the the appropriate way to carry them and all four of them will fit and they're in there snug and they do stay put uh, the last one that you put in is a little bit more it's a little more difficult to get in there properly but they will all go and then of course the crossbow goes in her hand and the trigger guard on the crossbow is not big enough to go on these posts on the backpack so don't want to try that you'll mess it up nobody wants that and as far as the stand goes of course she has two ports in the bottom of her feet and she just pegs into either one or both of them however you like to do it and there we have it my friends a look at scarlet retro scarlet and her accessories it's time for my favorite part of a review comparisons and here we have the gi joe classified series retro carded scarlet with the gi joe classified series wave one scarlet and the gi joe classified series snake eyes origins movie scarlet
Here we have the G.I. Joe Classified Series Retro Carded Scarlet with the Valiverse Action Force Pandora with a mix and match of original parts and upgrade kit. And the Valiverse Action Force Eclipse with upgrade kit. For our final set of comparisons, here we have the G.I. Joe Classified Series Retro Carded Scarlet with from the Marvel Legends series making his cameo appearance, Stan the Man Lee from G.I. Joe Classified Series, the Hasbro Pulse exclusive Regal Variant Cobra Commander from Star Wars The Black Series, the Archive Edition 501st Legion Clone Trooper. And for a 7-inch scale comparison from the Masters of the Universe Masterverse line, the 40th Anniversary He-Man. For final thoughts on the G.I. Joe Classified Series Retro Carded Scarlet, I have to say this really, really takes me back to that original real American hero figure and which is what it's supposed to do and when they revealed this figure it wasn't that much of a surprise we knew from the Dragonfly HasLab figure Glinda that we would be getting a Scarlet simply because of the mold and I have to say you know even though a lot of her accessories are reuse like the rifles the backpack for her I think is new and the quiver is new the crossbow I think is new I don't remember seeing it anywhere uh, the pistol is reuse and the knife is most likely reuse I don't remember seeing that specific knife that she comes with but I'm sure that we probably have seen this knife before most likely several times now while there's not a whole lot of paint deco going on with this figure the way that it is made up is appropriate the sculpt is very very classic you know even with the little Derringer type pistol and the ninja stars on her arm gauntlet you know the original figure that's that stuff that the original even came with and the fact that she has two different ponytails or you can just leave the ponytails unplugged and give her that super classic original action figure look I think is, is was a really great part uh, great thought on Hasbro's part and of course you know she comes with the stand like all the retro figures do which I do like and I do appreciate the fact that they are packing those in with the figure along with this plethora of accessories that the retro figures do come with I, I feel like Scarlet probably comes with a little bit more because maybe she's a smaller figure and they just included a couple more accessories to kind of fill out the plastic quota maybe but nonetheless the new parts of this figure I do appreciate the classic throwbacks of this figure I do appreciate and the head sculpt on this one while not the perfect version of Scarlet I wouldn't say it's very very close and if they had given us in that first wave of classified series if the Scarlet head had been more similar to this then I don't think we would have gotten quite as many complaints or, or, or felt like you know she was a teenager because that figure does quite frankly look like a very very young version of Scarlet and you know not that it's a bad figure on its own it's just when you know you think of Scarlet this is 
more what you think of, you know, I, I didn't watch a whole lot of the other G.I. Joe shows other than Renegades, I watched that one, but still, this is my, when I think of Scarlet, this is, this is the version, like a lot of us, I suppose, this is the version that I think of. Just, you know, if you grew up with the original Real American Hero line, then, you know, these retro, this retro line, is it's made f for those of us who love that original line. And so I really recommend if you're a fan of that and you're a fan of six-inch scale figures, then this is definitely, definitely a pickup. Well, that does it for the review. I hope that you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. Only support from viewers like you make this programming possible. Each view does count, and I do appreciate each and every single view that I receive. Thank you, thank you, and thank you so very, very much for supporting this channel through viewing. If you are interested in supporting my channel further, I am now offering memberships at various tiers. Click the join button on my YouTube page or check this video's description for the link and see if any membership offers are right for you, but only if you are in a position to do so. Comment below, like, share, subscribe if you would like to see more content or just want to help the channel grow, or both, that's even better. And don't forget to ding that bell so that in the future you will be notified as my new content becomes available. That's a wrap, folks. I'll see you next time.